This is the finished Christian's GT fly. I like to show people the fly before we get started tying it. it makes it a little easier to envision what you're trying to end up with at the end. Notice there's a shuck, there's a split tail, body, wing, parachute, hackle. Should be able to see the split tail fairly well right there. That's the Christian's GT fly. Hello, my name is George Kiesel, and we're going to tie the Christian's GT Pale Evening Dunn. It also works as a light Cahill. Uh, Rich Christian invented this fly. He's a guide, or was a guide, in Missoula, Montana for a long time. It's a variation on the clink hammer. You can tie this fly on a Mustad 37190 hook. I find the wire for that to be a little heavy. You can tie it on a partridge clink hammer hook. I find those a little difficult to locate sometimes. So what a hook that I always been able to find is a TMC 200R. This is a size 12. I'm going to take this hook and I'm going to bend it to shape. I'm going to take my pliers. I'm going to stick them right about there. I'm going to lift up and towards me. Just put a bend in that hook. That's going to be my body. That's going to be where the shuck goes. I call these the blue handle pliers, one of the best tools I own. They, um, I use them for debarbing, I use them for bending hooks quite often. This, a gallop cripple, they're one of my most effective tools. Um, so it's a good hook, it's a good material to have or a tool to have. I'm going to take my vise, I'm going to tip it down so that this section is basically flat. I'm going to attach my thread, wrap it back to the spot where I want my shuck to begin, cut your th thread with your scissors take your biot. When you cut your biot off of the um, off the feather, you're going to notice that there's a clear side and a dark side. When I wrap this, I want the clear side facing forward. So I'm going to attach this with the clear side forward and I'm going to wrap my thread with close wraps up to the spot, take my thread up to where I bent the hook. Now, this is a whole lot easier to wrap using hackle pliers. So I'm going to use my hackle pliers to wrap this. When you wrap this biot, the reason you put the clear side forward is because there's a little ridge on your biot. Gives your fly a little extra life. I like to be able to see that ridge. Take it to the flat, wrap it around once, wrap it twice, Still applying pressure with my left with my on my bobbin. Cut the dangler off. Cut the dangler off close. Wrap it flat. Now we're going to take a little bit of dubbing. First, I'm going to wax my thread. I like the wax. Applies the dubbing. Uses uh, really sticks it on there. I also wrap the additional wax on my fingers. Gives me a little extra purchase. Look how little dubbing I've used. It's not really very much. Twist it on, slide it down, wrap. I've created a lump. Now we're going to use that lump to separate our hackle because we're going to put a V-tail on this. I'm going to take a spade hackle. Spade hackles are chosen. Very little web in those fibers. Get rid of the stuff. Take about 12, maybe 14, 15, whatever pops off. Measure them to length. I want them to be the length of this body right there. Measure them. Stick them out the rear. Cut the stuff off that's going to be in your way. Tie them down the hook shank. When you hit the lump, you're going to notice that they spread you're going to notice that they spread. Sometimes you have to say it twice to make it work. I'm going to make an X wrap through those fibers to separate the tail. That's what your split tails going to look like. Once you've got your tail in, take your thread to the 100% point. I call the spot right there, right behind the hook, 100% point. Take a strand of Antron. This is spooled Antron. You'll sometimes find where it's been um, sort of melted or s s twisted together. 
I don't want to work with any of that, it's too difficult. I'm going to remove some of the fibers. Keep in mind that the thicker you make this piece, when you fold it under, the easier it's going to be to wrap your hackle. The thinner you make it, the more lifelike, lifelike it's going to be, and the better balanced your fly is going to be. Try to work on doing this with as thin, as small a piece of antron as you can. I'm going to loop this antron up and under. Okay? Note, I'm going to spread it out a little bit. Take my thread, tie back to about the 75% point. Switch. Catch it. And I've created my wing. I'm going to put a lump behind it so it stands up straight. Pull it tight. Make sure it's in. Spin your vise. Now, we're going to create the post. I kept my left hand out of there for a little while so you could see what I was doing. But now my left hand is in there to create a little stability. Notice that I'm not really babying these wraps. I can wrap very, very tightly and I'm going to make sure that my wraps at the base are tight because that's where this thing gets its support. So, I've created a post. I'll pull it up and straighten it. I'm going to cut some of that wing off because it's in my way. Take my thread back to oh, about the center of the body. It's not really a technical spot where I've stopped. A little more wax. A little wax for my finger. Take your dubbing. You cannot put your dubbing on too thinly. You can, however, put your dubbing on too thickly. So pay attention. Put your dubbing on thin. Put your dubbing on even. Notice that there's a little space right there. I'm going to use that to wrap back to where my where my ball started to separate and I'm going to start wrapping the body. I'm going to wrap to the base of the hook, go to the eye, come back, go forward. Found that I don't have enough dubbing, no big deal. Pop a little more on, again thin. Fill the spaces in, spin the vise, get the thread on the post. Take your hackle. This is a size 14 hackle. The length of this body is about a size 14. I've chosen the hackle to match the body. Not the length of the shank, not the shank size that we started with, but the length of the body. Remove the stuff you don't want, cut it off. Tie it on with the shiny side facing up. Wrap up the post, down the post. Take your thread, get it out of your way. Wrap your hackle. Wrap your hackle shiny side up. Sometimes you have to force it. Remember, you're the master of your materials. Make it go the way you want it to go. Wrap it up the post. Wrap it down the post. If your hackle is a little short, use your hackle pliers. No big deal. I'm going to attach my hackle pliers now, and I'm going to put them over here. I'm going to take my thread, bring it around, tighten it back up. I'm going to make about five wraps around the base of my post, above the hook shank, below the hackle wraps. Cut my hackle. Take my whip finisher. two, three, four, five, pull it off, tighten it up, cut your thread. Now, we're going to cut the wing the length, want it again to be sized to a size 14 fly, so I cut it the length. I also like my wing to have a little bit of a shape, so I'm going to put an angle in it. Normally, I take it and cut it like this, but you can't see what I'm doing, so I've now put an angle into that. This fly is a really good floater. Split tail keeps it flat, parachute lets it float, you can see the wing, the shuck in the water, lets the fish know that this is a cripple, and easy meat. This is a go-to fly, it's one of my best flies, 
when the uh, pale evening duns are out, or if I'm on the East Coast, the uh, Lake Cahill.